Hey guys, this is Wolfgang coming at you with another Diablo 4 video. Are you a fan of one shots? Are you a fan of crossbows? Are you a fan of sneaking up behind people when demons talk to their kids about predators? Do you want to be a main topic of conversation? Do you want to see the look on the face of all those rapid fire rogues with their micro bows out? And you walk into the room and you slap your big fat crossbow down on the table like well, this just might be the guide for you. Let's start out by talking about skills. We're going to start with Heartseeker, Penetrating Shot, Dash, Concealment, Shadow Imbuement, and Dark Shroud. Once we get our ultimate, we're going to actually drop Dark Shroud, not because we're no longer using it, but because you can actually get the benefits of the passive without having it on your bar. So you can cast it and switch it off and then continue to have it. And then later on, when we finally have enough energy regeneration through our build and through our specialization inner sight, we're going to be dropping Heart Seeker and we're actually going to be picking up Poison Trap. I'm probably going to switch them between my left click, my right click. So Penetrating Shot, Poison Trap. And so it's going to end up looking something like this. Starting with the aspects, we have enshrouding aspect. Gain a free dark shroud every three seconds when standing still. Each dark shroud grants two to four percent increased damage reduction. This is how we can keep up the stacks of dark shroud and drop it from the bar to keep the eight percent crit chance bonus from the passive, even if we get hit. This is one of two ways that we generate dark shroud, and this happens passively every three seconds. Then we have eluding aspect. This is going to be important in every single build. When you get injured while crowd controlled, you gain unstoppable for four seconds. This allows you to get out of sticky situations where you get hit by a freeze, you get hit by another freeze, you get stunned, and all of a sudden you've been taken from max health all the way down to injured, which is your last 35% health. And at that point, you become unstoppable. This allows you to use concealment. This allows you to dash. That is going to be your get out of jail free card. And so that's this is going to be this is going to be important for every single character, every single build. This is this is going to be necessary for everybody because there's nothing worse than getting CC locked until you're dead. The next one is going to be Edge Master's Aspect. As I noticed before, we're going to be having a lot of energy generation throughout our build. Skills deal up to 10 to 20% increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit while you have full primary resource. This is a, a flat 10 to 20% increased damage that you can have most of the time because as I said, we're going to be generating energy a bunch of different ways to the point that we actually drop our basic skill because we're no longer going to be using it. Then you have Umbrus Aspect, Lucky Hit, Critical Strikes with Marksmanship skills have up to an X percent chance to, to grant a free Dark Shroud Shadow. This is somewhat similar to Enshrouding Aspect. So we just want to maintain that 8% crit strike chance. And on top of that, it obviously gives us damage reduction. So that's why we have this. Then we have Wind Striker Aspect. Critical Strikes grant 8 to 16% movement speed for one second, up to six seconds. So this is going to, every time we crit, we're going to be able to move a lot faster. And we're going to be critting all the time. We're going to be popping out of concealment, getting insta crit. Concealment gives us move speed. We get a crit. We get more move speed from this. We're just going to be rotating movement speed. And this is going to give us all the mobility we, meet, we need on top of our normal abilities to be able to fix all of our positioning. Then we have smiting aspect. You have 10 to 20% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies. While you are healthy, you gain 20 to 40% increased crowd control duration. The reason we put this on our ranged weapon is because realistically, we are not gonna be putting many aspects on our ranged weapon. This was almost like a filler. You don't want to put your best aspects on your main weapon. The reason why is because it's gonna be expensive to constantly rotate them in and out. If we're gonna be running ranged, then we want to put our best aspects on 
everything except for our weapon because we're going to be wanting to upgrade our weapon incrementally as often as we can. Uh, as I said, this is kind of a, a placeholder. Then we have trick shot aspect. Whenever penetrating shot damages an enemy, two additional arrows split off to either side. These side arrows deal 10 to 25% of penetrating shots base damage and do not split. This is one of the bread and butters for the penetrating shot build. It's somewhat similar in importance to as the spinning twisting blades aspect. On top of that, it also helps you spread shadow imbuement. So then we have aspect of imitated imbuement. Your shadow clone also mimics the imbuements applied to your skills. Casting an imbuement skill grants your active shadow clone 8 to 16% increased damage for 5 seconds. This provides additional utility and damage to our shadow clone and makes our imbuements that much easier to spread. Then we have aspect of inner calm, deal 5 to 10% increased damage for each second you stand still, up to 30 seconds. This is just a classic damage steroid, but on top of that, our concealment actually gives us the ability to drop aggro and stand still for a second if we are low on energy and we want to build up the stacks of this. So what that would look like is we drop a couple penetrating shots, we're out of energy, none of our energy generation things have procced yet, we can now conceal, and then we wait the four seconds, and when we pop back out for an instant crit, it's gonna be boosted by that much more. Then we have Aspect of Synergy. This is what's going to allow us to really rotate through all of our abilities. We're gonna have using an agility skill reduces the cooldown of your next subterfuge skill by 20%. So this is gonna be our dash is going to reduce the cooldown of our next subterfuge skills by 20%. So our dash is going to reduce the cooldown of our concealment and our poison trap. I cannot stress enough how important this synergy is because poison trap is actually our highest damage ability and then on top of that our concealment allows us to get instant free crits which it's on a 20 second cooldown but on top of that if we're using it offensively we can't use it defensively so if we're dashing it gives us another out then we have aspect of corruption your imbuement skills effects have 20 to 40% increased potency against vulnerable enemies. So this opens up a much larger conversation about damage calculations. So you're able to create vulnerability from your shadow imbuement. Every time your shadow imbuement hits somebody and they don't die, then it makes them vulnerable for two seconds. Now, I've posted up uh, a picture of the damage buckets for rogues. Vulnerable is calculated on its own damage bucket. What that means is that it is purely multiplicative, so vulnerable damage is a very strong stat to seek. Um, this is going to make your imbuements dramatically stronger, and this is one of the best damage steroids you can get for your shadow imbuement. And then lastly, we have our gems, which is 12% increased critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. Again, we get this through our shadow imbuement. Ruby is 4% max life. This is going to be for our armor. And then jewelry, we want to increase our armor because that's the vast majority of damage is through, the, through physical type damages. Now we're going to go through the skill trees. The skill tree, we are going to start with Heartseeker. We're going to get Enhanced to Heartseeker. This is going to be what we're going to be using early on when we are low on energy. It gives us something to fill that gap, but as I'm going to talk about in a bit. And then we go Penetrating Shot, Enhanced Penetrating Shot, Improved Penetrating Shot. We get another point here. Then we're going to get Dash. We're going to get Enhanced Dash. And then at some point, we're going to get Methodical Dash. Methodical dash is how we cycle through the other side of the cooldown reduction that we get with um, synergy aspect. And then we're going to max out our penetrating shot because that's our main source of damage. We're going to get dark shroud, enhanced dark shroud, countering dark shroud. We're going to get concealment, enhanced concealment. So this is you gain 40 energy whenever you enter concealment. So the reason we go dark shroud is, as I noted before, you can summon your dark shroud and then change that ability out and you still get the benefits of it. 
Occasionally, you're going to have to go back and refresh it, especially before you have those aspects that automatically add dark shrouds. At first, really, we don't even need to do that because we have open slots. But once we get into the later game, we're going to want other things more importantly. So then we're going to get um, Shadow Imbuement. Then we're going to get Countering Concealment because these aren't necessarily as important but they will be. This is a huge deal, is the skill that breaks concealment will always be a guaranteed critical strike. Shadow imbuement is better than this, but this con countering concealment is better than these. Then we go enhance shadow imbuement. You gain 15% increased critical strike chance against injured enemies infected by shadow imbuement. So, right, so we got 15% here. We got a full 8% here. We got 20% increased here. And so, and on top of that, now enhanced dash enemies damage by dash take 20% increased critical strike damage from you for five seconds. So all these things are really modifying our crit and the amount of damage our crit does. Then we have blended shadow imbuement. So shadow imbuement's primary explosions make enemies vulnerable for two seconds. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Now that we've filled this portion out, we're gonna kind of go back here because there's some really strong passives such as weapon mastery. The reason that I say that we should go crossbows is because 5% increased critical strike damage. We're gonna be pumping that up to max, so that way we get 15% increased critical strike damage, which again, we're, we're gonna be critting all the time. And then we're gonna go back to maxing out shadow imbue. Then we're gonna go shadow clone, prime shadow clone, supreme shadow clone. Once we get shadow clone, consuming shadows. So we just, at first, we want just a one pointer in here so that each time you kill an enemy with shadow damage, it generates 10 energy. So our shadow imbuement, once it starts killing people, we're just going to be generating all sorts of energy to continue to fire off penetrating shots. Sorry, right, we're going to max out our consuming shadow. Then we're going to max out our shadow imbuement. We can get precision. So precision, critical strikes with mark, mark, marksmanship skills grant precision. You gain 4% increased critical strike damage per stack of precision up to a maximum of 20%. When you reach maximum precision, your next marksmanship skill is guaranteed critical strike that deals 40% increased critical strike damage, then consumes all stacks of precision. We're going to keep getting critical strike damage, and which is which we have multiple ways to get. Now we have two different ways to get guaranteed critical strikes. Now we're going to go into Adrenaline Rush. While moving, you gain 5% increased energy regeneration. We're going to Impetus. After moving 15 meters, your next your next attack deals 7% increased damage. So this is, this is adding to our base damage before we add critical strike modifiers. And that's why this is a really strong one. So we're going to be shoot, move shoot move shoot move and now we're going to start filling in our other abilities so this one is really strong you deal six percent increased damage to healthy and injured enemies so this accounts for 55 percent of someone's health bar so if they are in the top 20 percent which is healthy we do six percent increased damage and if they're in the bottom 35 percent they we deal this six percent so we're going to max this out because this is really strong now we're going to go back down to Adrenaline Rush. So this is going to increase our energy generation. And at this point, and then we're going to get a couple points in Aftermath to restore additional energy. At this point, we are to the point where we don't need to have a basic ability because now we have energy regeneration here. We have energy regeneration here. We have it in Consuming Shadows. And so we don't need a basic attack anymore. So now we're dropping our basic attack and we're going to be redu re only using our penetrating shot. Now we're replacing our basic attack with poison poison trap. So now then we go enhance poison trap. So it knocks down to enemy for 1.5 seconds when it activates. Then poison trap has a 30% chance to reset your imbuement skill to cooldowns when activated. So that's huge. Now we're, now we're going to cap out our poison trap. We're going to get deadly when I was originally filming this video, I put a point in to stutter step as opposed to finishing out at some point earlier in the build the improvement to dash. So that realistically should have came previously, and so just wanted to make that correction. Thanks for joining me for this surprise penetration. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and thank you for joining me for this video. I hope to see you guys on the release of Diablo 4.